from here. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and put me to get people.
Well, good morning on this beautiful last day of 2023. If you will turn in to the back of your bulletins, we'll pay or let's place, pay special attention to uh, those people who need to be remembered in prayer. Maybe put that in your Bible and through the week, keep them in your prayers. And our shut-ins, of course, in military. Um, we also have our birthdays to announce. Uh, Carol Barrett on the 31st, Vicki Lennon. She'll be 39 again this year. <laughs> Maisie Alder on the 7th. Kelly Cottrell. Roger Sheets. Francis Sheets. Jeanette Timison. It was a big birthday month. We uh, need to wish them a happy birthday. If you uh, will sing along with a happy birthday song, please. And um, the announcements this week, we will have a weekly Bible study beginning on Thursday, January 11th, 6.30 p.m., and you may contact the church office for more details. The Honduras Mission Team will hold a spaghetti fundraiser Sunday, January 14th, after worship at First Baptist Church in Red Springs. If you'd like to make desserts for the fundraiser, please speak with Todd Brents. Uh, I'm going to be passing around a calendar, and this is for the 2024 flower calendar. Uh, it will also be available in the church office. Also attached to this clipboard will be a liturgist sheet. Um, please sign up. A schedule will be, will be based on the number of names on the list, and it's an easy way to serve the church just a few times a year. Uh, take note of Scouts, meeting Tuesday, 6.30, and Feeding Jesus, Saturday, 9 a.m., and, of course, those things that have already been announced. So I'll get this started around. And we will uh, I think that I have the call to worship Psalm 72, 1 through 14 if you'll stand for that oh, that's not oh, okay, it's up here And it's in the United Methodist Hymnal, 795. Do you have it? Okay. Give the king your justice, O God. And your righteousness to the royal son. May he judge your people with righteousness. And your poor with justice. Let the mountains bear prosperity for the people. fruits to the needy, and crush the oppressor. May he live while the sun endures, and as long as the moon throughout all generations. May he be like rain that falls on the mown grass, like showers that water the earth. In his days, may righteousness flourish and peace abound until the moon be no more. May he have dominion from sea to sea. From the river to the ends of the earth. May his foes bow down before him and his enemies lick the dust. May the kings of Tarshish and of the Isles render him tribute. May the kings of Sheba and Seba bring gifts. May all kings fall down before him, all nations serve him. 
For he delivers the needy when they call, the poor and those who have no helper. He has pity on the weak and the needy. And saves the lives of the needy. From oppression and violence, he redeems their life, and precious is their blood in his sight. And now, the hymn of praise. There's a song in the air, the uh, hymnal 249. You will remain standing for the affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed, UMH 881. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. seated. Today's Old Testament scripture comes from Samuel, 1 Samuel 2, 18 through 21. It can be found in the Pew Bible, Old Testament, page 240. Samuel was ministering before the Lord, a boy wearing a linen ephod. His mother used to make for him a little robe and take it to him each year when she went up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. Then Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife and say, May the Lord repay you with children by this woman for the loan that she made to the Lord. 
and then they would return to their home. And the Lord took note of Hannah. She conceived and bore three sons and two daughters. And the boy Samuel grew up in the presence of the Lord. Next, we have the New Testament scripture, Galatians chapter 4, 4 through 11. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. Formerly, when you did not know God, you were enslaved to beings by, that by nature are not God's. Now, however, that you have come to know God, or rather to be known by God, how can you turn back again to the weak and beggarly elemental principles? How can you want to be enslaved to them again? You're observing special days and months and seasons and years. I'm afraid that my work for you may have been wasted. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Vicki. Good morning. Smiling faces, this cheerful day that the God has made, and even though it's a little chilly, it's still cheerful. We, uh, on the last day of the year, thankfully that it's gone. We ain't got to worry about it anymore. Now, hopefully we can have a, a new prosperous year with uh, things will settle down, but we all know that it's in God's time. Any joys that we have? We just spent Christmas with our loved ones. Yes. Sure. We give God the glory, Jackie. We give God the glory. Yes, Todd. Travel mercies for Todd. That's that it always works out, especially now the new year's coming. There's still a lot of us traveling, so we'll keep those in our prayers. Are there any other joys that we have? What about cares and concerns that are not listed in our bulletin? Besides the wars in the Middle East with Israel and Ukraine. Yes, Todd. All right. Todd's friend. Okay. Anyone else? Well, let's pray. Lord, as always, it's a joy to be in your house. And Lord, you know that we are needy people. Our needs are seem to be greater every year. But Lord... We do know that you, as the ultimate physician, can heal that. You can heal our needs also and fill our, our desires of our hearts with your joy. And we ask, Lord, that you pour your blessings out upon us as we venture forth in a new year with hopeful expectations. And we, Lord, we ask that you listen to us as we proclaim the good news to others, but also, Lord, uh, those silent uh, concerns that we have in our hearts we ask that you pay attention to them also with your blessings but in all these things lord we do ask in jesus name who gave us the ultimate prayer by saying 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And now the choir has a special song.
Now, this being the last day, and I've got a couple of hiccups, so I ask forgiveness now, because this is not in your bulletins. This story about a sandwich man, and his capacity to care is the thing that gives life its deepest meaning and significance. So what would you do if you wanted to make a difference in the world? Leave a mark or, or put a deposit on a ticket to heaven? Would you think big and pick the flashiest or more grandest no, uh, of acts that you have that you could think of? Or would you quietly persevere every day doing one personal deed at a time? Well, Michael Cristiano is a New York court city officer. He gets up every morning at 4 o'clock in good weather or bad weather, work day or holiday, and he walks to his sandwich shop, which is in his kitchen, and he prepares sandwiches for those who are starving. And by 5.50 a.m., he makes his rounds with a makeshift homeless shelters in Center and Lafayette Streets, and that's near New York City Hall where he works at. In a short time, he gives out 200 sandwiches to the homeless people just before he goes to work. He started a mission 20 years ago with a cup of coffee and a roll for a homeless man named John. And day after day, Michael brought John sandwiches, tea, clothes, and when it was really cold, a resting place in his car while he worked. Now, in the beginning, Michael just wanted to do a good deed for someone. Isn't that a wish for all of us to do a good deed? And then one day, a voice in his head compelled him to do more. On a cold winter's day, Michael asked John if he wanted to clean up. It was an empty offer because Michael was convinced that John would say no. Unexpectedly, as things happened, John said, are you going to wash me? Michael heard an inner voice say, put your money where your mouth is. Looking at the poor man covered in raggedy, smelly clothes, unkept hair and wild looking, Michael was afraid, but deep down he knew that he was looking at a big test of his commitment to the poor. So he helped John upstairs in the locker room in the courthouse and began cleaning process. John's body was a mass of cuts and sores, a result of years of pain and neglect. His right hand had been amputated, and Michael pushed through his own fears and revulsion. He helped John wash. He cut his hair. He shaved him and shared a breakfast with him. It was at that moment that I knew I had a calling, and I believed I had it within me to do anything. With the idea of her sandwiches born, Michael began his calling and receives no corporate uh, sponsorship. He's not looking for charity that goes into a record book so that it would get attention. He's doing what God asks us to do, do it quietly and in secret. And sometimes he'll get uh, donations from people. Most of the time come out of his pocket. And there are days when it snows, and he has a hard time getting out of his comfortable bed to go in that kitchen to start making the sandwiches. But then that voice chatters in his head, and he gets to it. Michael made 200 sandwiches every day for the past 20 years. When I give out sandwiches, I don't simply lay them on a table for folks to pick up. Most likely, does the same thing that you guys do when you feed Jesus. He looks everyone in the eye. And he talks to them, he shakes their hand, and he offers them good wishes and a hopeful day. Each person is important to me. Folks, each one of you are important to God. I don't see them as homeless, but human beings who need food and encouraging smile and some positive human contact, which is what we all need. And once Mayor Koch turned up to make rounds with him, he didn't invite the media, it was just us. And Michael said that all of his memories was working side by side with the mayor was not near as important as working next to someone else. A man disappeared from the ranks of the sandwich takers, and Michael thought about him from time to time. He hoped the man had moved on to a more comfortable condition. And one day, the man showed up, transformed, reading Michael clean cut, warmly clothed. He shaved, and he was carrying sandwiches of his own to hand out. Michael's daily dose of fresh food and warm handshakes and eye contact became well wishes for this man. It gave him hope and encouragement that he desperately needed, that we all need. 
being seen every day as a person, not as a category or a number, he turned his man's life around. And that moment needed no dialogue. The two men worked silently side by side, handing out their sandwiches. It was another day on the streets of New York, but a day with just a little more hope. And that's my wish for each one of you today, that we have a day of a little more hope. With that said, the uh, offering plates in the front and the back. As always, before you go, or if you already have, we thank you, but we ask that you drop your tithes and offerings into plates before you leave. Let us pray. Father, we realize that all good things come from you, and we give you thanks, Lord. We give you thanks for all that you do in our lives. So, Lord, when we fall short of your glory, when we fail to, to give you what you need to further your kingdom, and we selfishly keep it for ourselves, we ask for forgiveness, Lord. We know to be good stewards, we need to do what you ask us to do. But, Lord, as humans, we don't always do that. There are times when the humanness of us takes over and we forget what your promises are and we go into our own self. Forgive us for the shortcomings, Lord. And we pray with all of our hearts and all of our mind and all of our soul that one day we will do what's right in your sight. One day we will work as we strive in this earth for perfection in your world. But before we know we're only aliens here, but Lord, we still ask that the new year give us more hope and, and grace than we've ever had and we ask it in christ's name amen amen if you would please stand for the stock sology seated and we're going to be graced with a beautiful song.
Scripture reading today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 41 through 52. Hear God's word. Now every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem but his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went on a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among the relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. And he said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them, and his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in his wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. This is a word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. So, sermon title is Raising the Perfect Child. But how many of us are looking forward to a new year with a promise of a more peaceful outcome than 2023 was? And what new year's resolutions will we make only to have broken them or not even try to make good on them. And I pray that God's will be done with me, his lowly servant, that I will listen and obey when he calls upon me. But sadly, I don't always do what I should. And when he tells me, she said, you know better, why don't you do better? <laughs> I can't put the human thing on because it just makes her a little bit more angrier at me. But in today's readings that we have was uh, two faithful women of God that was raising their children for God. 
And children of God are born to faithful women like Hannah and Mary, women who bear witness to the strength and spiritual commitment. Hannah promises to consecrate her child to be a servant of God, and she did. She did because God granted her a pregnancy. God heard her prayers and blessed her with Samuel, among others, two more sons and a daughter. And those of us who have a firstborn know that our love sometimes can be greater than anything else. We know how precious that child can be. And Hannah's love for the Lord, though, is greater than that of man. And she honors her promise and delivers Samuel into the temple. For she knows that she can trust God with her most prized possession, her only child. Because of her faithfulness, God has entrusted her to be a part of God's work in this world. And we can thank God for that. The other faithful woman is Mary that we read about and that we celebrated this last week. God used her as a vessel for peace for mankind in the birth of Jesus, our Savior of the world. We delight in the infant child whose birth that we celebrate. And since this is the second, well, it's the first, first Christmas after, uh, first, first Sunday after Christmas, I go two more. So next Sunday will be the second, and then I'll take the nativity scene down. But I just wish Christmas could be every day. It's not the presents that I get. It's the joy I see from people, and it's the thought that God loves me, even though I'm not worthy of that love. So... But going back to Jesus in his childhood, we don't have any record of it past the 12 years. And I'm sure that he's like all of our little children. He suffered from colds and he had ear aches and he experienced all the miseries and the joys of a small baby. But he grew. He grew. Our gospel tells us that Jesus is now 12. He's a bright young lad. And his insight amazed those Jewish leaders. But they had not known that Jesus had spent many, many a day alone with his father. Luke tells us that Jesus is growing in wisdom, stature, and in his relationship with other people. Jesus grew with a family that went to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. He went there every year. And he was a family that was dedicated to God, just like you all are. Every Sunday you show up. That's your dedication to God. Mary and Joseph traveled that 20 miles with family members because of safety in great numbers. So it was not surprising that when the group headed back to Nazareth, they didn't look for Jesus. They thought he was a family member. He uh, went missing, though, after that one day. So how many of us, as parents, have felt panic of not knowing where our children are? What questions went through their minds is what questions went through ours. Wondered where on earth they could be and they wondered where Jesus could be he was upset I've noticed that with my brother mom would always get in a quandary and want to know where he was the youngest brother had a habit of walking off and not telling anybody where he was going and those kids had to get together and go search for him it didn't take three days to find him because we knew his habits about where he was going to be so usually in about three hours we had him back to the house but can we imagine how they felt when they would look for him for three days. He was entertaining the Jewish leaders, and like I said, they were amazed by what he was doing. But imagine the relief the family felt when they finally found Jesus. And Mary says, Son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. And Jesus gently reminded him whose he son he really was indicating that he had a special relationship with his heavenly father. He was following God's mission for him and respectfully answers Mary's query. Why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Jesus knew who he was and whose he was, who he belonged to, just as all of us do. Our lives belong to Jesus Christ and the, our God, our father. But do we always live that way? No, we don't. But thanks be to God, Jesus did. Jesus did. And those were not words from a rebellious teenager breaking away from his parents. We know that wherever he, they went, Jesus was obedient to them. It seems that Jesus, being at a young age, knew that 
what his understanding of God was and far beyond what any youngster could. He'd grown in his awareness of his special role and the will that he played in God's plan of salvation. He recognized that God is his father as well as son to Mary. And we see this because it was in 29 AD and the scriptures are Luke chapter 3 verses 21 to 22, Matthew chapter 3 verses 15 through 17, and Mark chapter 1 verses 9 through 11. That's when Jesus is baptized in the waters of the Jordan. And a voice from heaven announces, You are my beloved son. You, I am well pleased. Jesus was get strengthened through God, just as we all are. But Mary and Joseph was also part of those plans, just as you all are. God chooses a man and a woman who would raise Jesus in a God-centered home. And this is what we are called to do for our children and our grandchildren, raising them in a way of Christ. We need to let all the children know that they are descendants of God. God has numbered every hair on their heads. They belong to God just as we do because we're his children too. God has chosen each one of us, believe it or not, for an important responsibility. You have a gift and a talent that's God-given. Use that talent this year. It's a new year to use it for God's glory, not yours. Today's reading and gospel glimpses of Jesus' early years and how he was growing in maturity. But he went to Calvary to sacrifice for forgiveness of our sins. And we'll come up on that later on. But that's what I'm thankful for, that Jesus died and rose so that I could live a life worthy of that. We're beginning a new year in hopes of better times and better health than last year. Many of us have battled health problems, loss of family members, and we can add to that list. There are many who have a, had a good year, though, and those who have met new people and formed new relationships, growth within themselves. Then some of us have regrets and wish we could undo our disappointments in life. And all of these things I look upon as a building of our character in Jesus Christ. We can't always go through life on a high because the failures require us to depend on God for help. We can begin a new year by setting spiritual goals in our lives. Prayer is essential and a routine of daily devotions. Make a commitment to be open to what God wants from you and be diligent in your devotions. Throughout Scripture, God encourages men and women to achieve the goals that he has set from before them. God wants the best for all of you. So allow God to guide you in whatever he has in store for you. And after all, he knows what your needs are. What a shame it would be to waste a new year trying to live for self instead of living for Jesus. What a shame it would be. I know firsthand because of these times when I've ran from God, when you look back in the, the past, knowing that he has set a, a path before you and you choose not to go that path, you will regret it later on in life. But don't let that regret despair you. Just go forth because God is about second chances and third chances and fourth chances. What did he tell Peter? Forgive your neighbor seven times 70. He forgives us that much too. And now, I would like for all of us to grab your hymnals and turn to page 607. 607. It is a covenant prayer in the Wesleyan tradition. And I want to end this year with this prayer. I want all of us to recite it. Let's begin. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside for thee. Exalted for thee or brought low by thee. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. 
I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine and I am thine, so be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And our <coughs> last hymn is Go Tell It on the Mountain. It's on page 251. And I want you to realize that it's also, if you need to come to the altar, that's the time to come to the altar. Please stand. What he wants you to be by telling the world about the good news of this coming it's jesus christ you have that gift you have that talent let your light shine for others in the name of the father son and holy spirit go in his peace amen amen <laughs>